Today I'm only going to be eating one piece food for 24 hours, so of course we need this giant chunk of meat. But here's the thing with the pirate crew, they actually don't eat very often, but when they do, they eat a lot of food. So in this case, I'm actually going to be fasting pretty much all day until dinner is ready, in which case I invited my own pirate crew to come join me. And I've actually made one dish for each character that's part of the original Straw Hats Pirates. This first dish is based on Luffy. Of course it has to be a giant chunk of meat. This giant chunk of meat is actually stacked beef rib, but smooth brain for forgot to tell you what it was. We're doing this very, very simply though. Salt, a lot of black pepper, and then a ton. This is actually three bulbs of crushed garlic. This needs to cook for around six hours at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're gonna let this go until basically dinner time. So cheers. Now Luffy's is the easiest. Next up, we gotta make Sanji's dish. And you may be wondering where I got the idea for all of these. There's also a wiki about the likes and dislikes of the Straw Hat Pirates, so I mean, if you guys wanna check that out, it's right over here. Now Sanji does like some seafood and some pasta, so I'm gonna be making a sort of spicy marinara arrabbiata. I'm also taking some creative freedoms with this by adding some vegetables because we gotta have some veggies in all of this. Otherwise it's just, it's literally meat and I think we got some fruit somewhere. So in this case, I do have some diced bell pepper and then we're also gonna do some diced zucchini and some red onion. As you can see from all of this vegetable in this bowl, this is gonna be a very chunky sauce and we, we like it chunky. Now this sauce does need to cook for quite a while. So that's why I'm kind of timing it to go with Luffy's beef. This way it can simmer and marinate and just hang out while everything else is kind of cooking and I'm putting all of my vegetables that I diced up straight into this pan. I have just about one whole head of garlic and a bunch of shallots. So that's gonna go in there too. Now all I need to do is cook these onions and these vegetables until they're slightly tender and then we just add everything else and throw it on the stove. Make sure we do season this with a hefty amount of salt. Now once these vegetables are nice and tender, this is when we get to finish it up. What do you have to say about that Snoop Dogg? We gonna do this dog stuff. Don't ask me why I have Snoop Dogg wine. We do need to deglaze the bottom of that pan with just a bit of red wine. If you can't have wine, and you're making this at home, honestly, you can just use a little bit of chicken stock. That's gonna be totally fine too. It just won't be as sweet. So make sure you add just a touch of sugar or something like that too. It'll be fine. Oh yes. Maybe a little, a little. This wine smelling good. Now this reduces very, very quickly. And when it's basically done reducing, this is when we get to add in some tomato sauce. Yes, instead of crushed tomatoes, because I have whole tomatoes that I'm gonna add as well, we're adding some tomato sauce. Along with all of our chopped tomatoes, this is also gonna add a ton of liquid to this. You see why I'm kind of starting this early. I want this to hang out and sit around. Now once you have all this stirred up, I'm gonna turn this heat down because it is starting to get real crazy in there. This is when we add a lot of our aromatics. This is some chopped thyme, really, really fresh chopped thyme. That's going right into there along with some really fresh chopped oregano. Throw that in there as well. And then finally, we're gonna be adding in all of our chili flakes. This makes it nice and spicy. Now, once it starts to simmer, I'm gonna throw the lid on it, turn this off and take it over the stove and put this on slow and low. Literally let this go for the six hours or whatever we're cooking. With Sanji's dish and Luffy's dish going, we're gonna be starting Zoro's dish. And I'm gonna give you three seconds to guess what it's gonna be in the comments down below. Three two, one. It's onigiri. You have to do onigiri. Now we're doing three cups of washed rice. You have to say it every time. Add your water into the rice cooker. You know the drill. Let it sing the song of its people. And then we have to make the filling for these onigiri, which I think is gonna be pretty fantastic. Filling is actually gonna be some seared ahi. Make sure you do sear each and every side just so that way it's all even. Smoke the house out eventually. Once that fish is seared, I'm just gonna place it to the side because we're just gonna let it cool down for a minute while we get everything else ready and hopefully not set off the fire alarm. Now the filling for this onigiri is going to be that seared tuna, but also some really fresh green onion too. Now all this green onion goes straight into whatever mixing bowl you have. And yes, this is the bowl that I had just previously used for rice. I am already looking at my dishes pile up. Now, of course, this is also tuna mayo. So we're gonna hit this with, I don't know, two tablespoons of kewpie. Now I'm also gonna be using just a touch of yuzu juice. This is completely optional. And also keep in mind that this might turn it into ceviche, but we're just, we're gonna roll with it. The next thing is gonna be a nice spoonful of wasabi tapico or fish roe. This is actually inspired by Janelle Eats when we did our battle together. So thank you for that, Janelle. I, I appreciate it. Give this a quick stir. Now, normally tuna mayo onigiri are cooked all the way through. So I actually don't really mind that this might turn into ceviche because I guess that's usually supposed to just use canned tuna. I also wanna make sure when I dice this that I do dice it up thin enough to like fit inside the onigiri. Uh, I've ran into that problem before. How am I supposed to fast for the next five hours? Like, can you eat like a little bit? Can I just have some of this tuna? Can I, will you? tuna straight into your bowl. And this looks, this looks really good. Really, really good. It needs salt. 
Don't forget the salt. Do one of those. Yeah, not maybe not too much. Look at look at that. Don't you just want to dig in just right now? Transfer this to something a bit more manageable. Yeah. Now this just gets to go in the fridge until we're ready to plate up. So we, we gotta plate these up like an hour before dinner, you know? Now as we continue on with this feast, the next one is gonna be Nami. And everyone wants to see Nami's fruit dish. Can't not even like one video without saying stuff like that. I'm actually really excited that this is Nami's dish because she does grow up on a tangerine farm, which this is not a, this is a papaya. Tangerines over there. This is a dish called a fruit Maced macedone, which I probably just butchered, but it's basically, a, it's like a giant fruit cup, but there's more. Scoop out the seeds, which I'm gonna do over here. Make sure you do peel it completely. Nobody wants to eat the papaya skin. This dish is actually something that Sanji had made for Nami when they first basically met at the floating restaurant. It was very brief, but he did make it. When you're cutting these, also think about trying to have them into like manageable bite-sized pieces, like one inch chunks of fruit on each one. This is a good size that we can just pick it up with a fork. As you finish up each fruit, just throw it into a large bowl because we do need to mix this with the two secret ingredients that I'm gonna show you after all this fruit. Very big fruit salad already, and that's just the papaya. We're gonna do the same thing with our mangoes, tangerines, strawberries, and pineapple. Once you have all of your fruit done, this is when we make our mint syrup. We take mint, take off most of the stems, throw your mint in there. I don't know, that's like maybe eight sprigs of mint, 10, ten sprigs of mint. Fill it halfway with water. We're also gonna do about an equal portion of water to sugar. We're not gonna use all of this. We don't wanna use all of this, that's way too much sugar. That looks about right. Now I'm gonna pop this over to the stove because it will need to simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes. So we're just gonna let this hang out over there. We have Nami's dish basically done. Sanji's dish basically done. Zoro's dish almost done as well. We just have to kind of put that together. Luffy's is, he's the easy one. We don't have to worry about him. Now we have to work on Usopp. Usopp's is a little interesting. I'm really excited for this one. Usopp's dish is actually some black cod fillets. This, he, he loves fish as all the straw hats do, but we're also going to be making a really nice, like tangy, spicy, kind of like paste that goes right on top. And for that, we're starting off with some limes. We're not only using the lime juice, we're using the zest. You want all of it in there. There's just something about zesting citrus that just smells so good. Once you have all that zest in there, we're just gonna juice these bad boys directly on top of that zest. This is gonna also get one whole bunch of cilantro. We're gonna chop this up so this way, it's just like really nicely chopped and this way kind of blends in with that lime zest that we have in there. Chopped cilantro goes right on top of everything. Then I have some Thai chilies. This is gonna make it very spicy, but so good. If you are using Thai chilies for this recipe, it, it is gonna be spicy, so make sure you cut these up nice and thin. Otherwise, you're gonna get a big old chunk of it in your mouth. Mouth, not good or good. That's what you want your Thai chilies to look like. Can you see that? Nice and small. Those are gonna go right onto here. Then we're gonna hit this with just a splash of rice vinegar. Just a, just a touch. A nice spoonful of sugar to kind of help out with some of the acidity and the heat. Otherwise it's just too much. A nice pinch of salt. And then I almost forgot. We do need the shallot. The shallot really kind of ties everything together. If I can get this freaking peel off, my God. I want the shallot nice and thin. I, I probably should use a mandolin, but I'm just gonna Trust my knife skills here and see if we can do it. Then once I've sliced them thin, I'm just gonna give this a quick, just a quick chop. Nothing too much. Shallot goes into here. Now give this a quick mix. And that shallot is very strong. I don't know why I'm crying already. Oh my God. Oh, okay. Now we're gonna let this sit and let it marinate. It's gonna hang out up until dinner time. So that way it's super strong when we need it. Now that we have the topping done for Usopp's dish, I do have to remove these pin bones because I don't want to eat pin bones. I don't think it's nice if my guests eat pin bones. The problem is I can't find my tweezers to pull these things out. So instead I'm going to just cut the pin bones out and that should just be it. These are where most of the pin bones are. That's pretty much it. You're left with this beautiful piece of fish. Now, it is split, but it's gonna be okay because of how we're gonna cook it. I'm gonna place this on some paper towel just to make sure that the skin stays super dry. And just pop it in the fridge. What else do we have? We gotta make pasta for Sanji. We just gotta boil pasta. This is the mint syrup that I had made earlier. We just need to strain this all out, make sure that there's no residue from the mint leaves. The rum is just gonna be added right on top before we serve it. Now for the pasta, I am using boxed rigatoni. I really wanted rigatoni and I don't have a rigatoni cutter, but I also wanted al dente pasta, which you really can't get with fresh pasta. We have about two hours before we have to serve dinner, so there's just a few more things to take care of. One of them is this sauce. Look at how thick this thing looks right now. 
This is when I'm gonna throw in all of my zucchini so it cooks nice and gently with this sauce. I'm just gonna throw it back on the stove. I know this is a lot of food. We have a lot more prep to do, but there's no reward other than pirate booty at the end of it. And for that, we're looking at Bespoke Posts, today's sponsor. Bespoke Posts is the monthly membership club that delivers really awesome under the radar goodies directly to you. It's free to join and you can skip or cancel anytime. Every month they're introducing their members to cool new products. Everything from outdoor gear to making your own beer at home and even this really cool herb garden. All you need to do to get started is take their really simple quiz. Every box has around $70 worth of stuff in it, but costs way less than that. And you can preview each month before you get it. So if it's something that you don't want, you can skip the month entirely or pick a different box. For this month, I picked the Dram box, which is this really awesome whiskey tasting that my wife and I are gonna have a lot of fun with. And to be honest, I picked it because she would want it more. But honestly, my favorite thing is their Weekender bag. It's this heavy duty canvas bag that I'm definitely going to be using for all of my travels for all the conventions that are happening this year. As soon as I showed this to Rachel, she called dibs, so she'll be using it. If you want your own Pirate's Booty, check out Bespoke Post down below, and they're gonna be giving you guys 20% off by using my link. Thank you to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video, sending me the Pirate's Booty, and now we can finally finish doing all this food, because it's a lot. At this point, we do wanna check the beef and look at how amazing this is right now. You start to see the separation of the rib from the short rib, and it just, I don't even know how I'm gonna cut this, but we're gonna try. For Sanji's pasta dish, I really do wanna use this halibut because it's really, really nice, but I'm gonna dice it. So this way, it incorporates itself into the sauce and you're not like trying to just have a giant chunk of halibut, but this halibut is also skin on and I do not want the skin of this halibut. So I'm just gonna carefully remove this and then we're just gonna dice it. So this video is going to uh, digress very quickly now that Abigail's here. <laughs> we're gonna take some of this fruit, place it into this bowl. This is, this is a lot of fruit. All the papayas at the bottom. That's a lot, that's a lot. I love it. You should have just tossed it in here then. Well, I just... What's the point of this bowl? I guess now it is tough. No, but we still have to add the mint simple syrup. Take a little bit of that. Oh, that was a lot of mint simple syrup. That's, that's fine. This also, don't pull out the mint simple syrup. I already went through the effort of making this. This is also gonna get a splash of brandy. If you're making this at home, you can feel free to leave the brandy out. It's gonna be fine. I mean, it's a, it's a pirate crew. They're probably drunk all of the time. I don't want that. I made my own mint simple syrup. See, Rachel's like, oh, we have mint simple syrup. We make our own. I did also use store-bought rigatoni today, so whatever. I, I need to try this. Rachel, you wanna try a piece? Rachel gets a strawberry. Okay, no, I get the strawberry. You get the strawberry. Too much mint? Enough mint? Just a little, you just want a little bit. I Fine. a little bit of it. I feel like you could use a little more mint. A little more mint? We're just gonna go with it. It's gonna be okay. Why can't you put it in a different bowl now? Shh. So it looks better. I want a pile. It's no, it's a different bowl. It's a different bowl. I'm not the crazy one. Y'all can't wait. This video's gonna take an additional three hours. Oh, That's a good one. But at least this is done. Get out of the way. We have descended into uh, chaos. It's 45 minutes until dinner time and I do need to let this rib meat rest. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to cut. So we're gonna, gonna pull this thing out. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Oh, Oh God, it's hot. Actually, can you put one of those towels underneath this? Thank you. Yes. Look at that crust. <laughs> Look at that. I bet you if I, if I touched one of these ribs, it would legit fall out. Do not eat the grease. You're not gonna poop right for a month. Okay, this does need to cool down for about 30 to 40 minutes before we can mess with it, which is perfect timing, so we're gonna get everything else done. Get out of here. Now I am gonna cheat a little bit with these onigiri. I'm gonna use an onigiri former and try to get this done with both of them now here. Onigiri former is kind of a hack, not gonna lie. We're gonna put our, put our rice down into the bottom of this and then get a little scoop of this, what is basically now like a ahi ceviche right into the center. Cause I want to get two per person. It's gonna be a lot of food. And then you do one of these. Well, press, beautiful. It doesn't get any prettier than this. So these actually will get, instead of seaweed, we're actually gonna do a little shiso leaf. Now it's done. We're gonna get six more of these done. Here's all eight of the onigiri and I got this really cool little platter for them. So we're just gonna place these right here. This way everyone gets two. I already messed up the plating. Look at that, that's beautiful. What more do you want? Onigiris, done. We're gonna finish it off with a little bit of salt right before we plate up and then just get it out. Next, we're gonna be finishing up Sanji's pasta, which is, does this have gas in it? Yes, which is pretty simple. A little bit of olive oil in the pan, a little bit of salt on the halibut and then right into your saute pan. This is super simple to put together too. While the halibut's cooking, we'll get everything else into a mixing bowl because it's gonna be a lot. And uh, pro tip, throw a little bit of water onto your pasta and pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds and it's, it's fine. All of it? All of it! We feed people who are broke. Now, once you have some color on your fish, this is when we're gonna turn this thing off. We're gonna grab 
this sauce. Look at how jammy that looks from sitting on the stove for so long. We're gonna take quite a few scoops of this right into here. The residual heat from the sauce is also gonna end up finishing the, the, the halibut cook, so that's gonna be really nice. Oh my God, there's so much sauce. We're, we're not using, we can't use all this. It's too much, it's too much. Well, maybe we will, because this is, this is a significant amount of pasta. We're gonna have to feed our neighbors too. We're gonna need all the sauce. <laughs> we are gonna put it in the cast iron for prettiness, but it looks so good. Okay, uh, this has to stay hot somehow. Now the last dish I have to put together is this black cod, and this is very, very simple. We're gonna sear it, skin side down, flip it, throw it in the oven, needs like eight minutes at the most. Throw the salt on there. Yes, oh yes. So much food. I'm so excited! After about three to four minutes, this is what I'm gonna flip this fish. Boom, oh my God, I love black cod. Throw in a dab of butter and into the oven. Now we can finish plating everything up. Now comes the fun part. We get to cut into this beef. Oh my God, there's so much crust. Oh, it's like, oh my God, it's like butter. Should this be the thumbnail? Look at this! <laughs> That's amazing. Look at the juices. Oh my God. It's not even sticking to, it's barely like on the bone right now. This is so nice. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that looks so good. I could barely cut this, no joke, without it falling apart. And the bones are just there for show at this point because they're not holding on. So we're gonna put this on the table. Black cod is ready. This is just gonna go straight onto here. We're gonna have to pick at this because it's so tender. Oh my God, look at this. This is our seafood platter, kind of. Take some of this really just like mouth-watering. Look at how it looks now. This is the sauce for the black cod. Gonna do that right on top. So it kind of marinates as it sits before it hits the table. Okay, to the table. We have to somehow get the pasta and the fruit on this table. Pasta is gonna get a bunch of Parmesan shredded right on top. Oh, did you say stop? Nah. Oh, is that, a, is that good? This is very hot. This is very hot. I think we have everything on the table. Let's let's eat this. We've been cooking for, I don't know, seven hours now. I'm ready to eat. I'm ready to eat. This One Piece Feast has absolutely taken all day and it's a ton of food. We, we've made one thing for each of the original members of the Straw Hat Pirates and you can see it all right now. It just, it looks so good. So we're gonna dive into this, give you our reaction as to however this tastes. Hopefully it's delicious. Oh, I have to cheers already? Paul, you know the rules. Cheers. Cheers. If you want to support the channel directly, check out the Patreon down below so we can continue to do weird stuff like this. Okay, I'm gonna go for, for this thing. Everybody I want this your... one. Holy crap, this thing is huge. Yes. Ooh. Oh, you were not prepared for that first bite. You were not prepared. Oh my God. Holy. It literally just like melts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at this beef pole right now. See this? See that? Do you, do you not want this in your life? Oh my God. This is the, the tuna mayo onigiri. Oh my god. Oh, it needs a little bit of salt. Mm. Oh, hold it. That pasta looks insane. This does feel like working all day and just having a massive family meal. And it does remind me of a lot of the scenes in One Piece. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. This black cod looks insane. Mm, this pasta. Mm -hmm. You're gonna love that. It's so good for me to eat. That's so good. It's like eating butter with spice on it. That's insane. George! Gum gum! Come and eat! We're gonna enjoy the rest of this meal. Please, wait, I don't even know how to finish this thing. I'm so like, just saturated with We're beef. gonna finish the rest of this <laughs> yes. meal. My name is Chef PK, get subscribed. Remember, keep playing with your food. And we're just gonna finish this now. This is we're so gonna funny. just eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't even know what's happening. I, I literally have been cooking for like eight hours. <laughs>